presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to our man, George, in Newport, Richie. George, what's going on, brother? Hello, Tom. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm doing great. Yourself? Yeah, great. I've been following you for the last two years, listening to your show. Well, thank you very much. Nice I appreciate it, it, George. All the hard work you've done for us over the years. Well, I really appreciate and, you calling uh, and saying hi. My pleasure, Tom. Okay. I'll listen to your show. Thank you, man. Have a great one and safe Have one. Appreciate it, man. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Microphone on. This is where we got to do checks before. How is everyone doing? This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. I'll be with you uh, tomorrow as well. Uh, what do we got taking a look at today? Well, we have the E mini up right now, about 0.47%, trading at 5237. The Russell about 2081, up 0.82%. The NQs up about 0.24%. Uh, the Dow futures up 0.83%. And that gold contract up about 0.91%, still at 2000. 343. It's not too much movement in it today. Silver actually up quite a bit, 3.06% currently at 28.44. Uh, uh, and then copper at 4.59, also up pretty decently as well. Crude oil, we're actually getting some move up in it today, off of that $77 area, 77.65, I believe, uh, is where we were trading uh, roughly yesterday. Uh, there's some conversation about energy in general. Uh, going to go up in cost. Of course, we had some issues with that gas as well. Uh, of course, this is the crude oil contract. Um, so not always connected, but at least for the use of energy, you know, you might have some kind of spillover into that. We have Tesla trading down, uh, continuing to test <laughs> that level of support at 172.02. Still Dynamics at 134.62. And Disney still in that area. Man, it's just so sad. They did strike a deal, I believe, with uh, Paramount. They're bundling some of their services, especially with Hulu as well. Uh, so hopefully that generates some, some decent profitability in their streaming, um, which they're still having a hard time either achieving or maintaining. Uh, one of the big plays of today, which is crazy, is uh, U.S. Cellular. <laughs> Look at that. Up 28.4%. So United States Cellular Corp., uh, obviously blew up after a Wall Street Journal report that T uh, released that T-Mobile, U.S. Incorporated, and Verizon Communications are nearing separate deals to buy parts of the telecommunications company. Pretty cool. Uh, T-Mobile would pay more than $2 billion for a portion of U.S. Cellular, according to the report, which cited people familiar with the matter. Uh, that deal could close as soon as this month, uh, while the Verizon deal could take longer or not close at all. The jump by U.S. Cellular triggered at least one volatility-related trading halt, and <laughs> the stock biggest intraday gain in nearly a year. Telephone and Data so Systems Incorporated, which holds about 73% of U.S. Cellular's publicly traded shares, soared as much as 25%. It was also briefly halted for volatility. Uh, I mean, that is pretty nuts, right? Starting around like 30, just right under 36, all the way up to uh, 46, a high of the day of 49 89, kind of some cool news for the day. Take a look a little bit at arms as well. Excuse me, arm. So down slightly, arm holding shares fell as the chip designer softer than expected annual revenue forecast cooled. So the enthusiasm around the stock following its AI power jump in recent months. Okay, talk about this because it reminded me, I. I don't know if I was on or I was listening or something like that, but someone was talking about, we had a caller, and they were discussing about this being a bubble, right? AI. And, or, sorry, it was the chips that was being discussed, right? And they were looking maybe for a potential short in anything in chips. And, again, I'm pretty sure they called me, and I was essentially like, don't do that, right? Now, my argument was that this is the future. Basil as well, when, you know, he comes on to the show and talks a little bit, he uses some of these semiconductors to kind of determine what the rest of the market's going to do. I think that's actually it's super intelligent. Uh, very cool. Always learn a lot from Basil. Anyways, the point was, is that this is the future. 
you know, uh, chips are going to be in absolutely everything, whether it's in your phones or whether they're using it for AI or whatever. And I will say 100%, I think a lot of capital flowed in to this kind of sector and, and, and things related to it. And I think it flowed very quickly. And so definitely when, when you get something like that, you can kind of get this backwash effect, right? Like, I mean, obviously we're not really off that much, right? 1.84%. What is NVIDIA trading? Just down slightly. Uh, yeah, just down 1.5. I, you know, not everything is going to be, not every earnings is going to be like stellar for these, right? But the point is, is that these kind of companies and this technology isn't going anywhere. It is going, it's here to stay. And so even when you get some, you know, rough things going on, um, you know, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Let's talk a little bit about this. I think on the long term, at least. And I, I really, I really defend that idea. So let's talk a little bit. Obviously, the high right here of 164, slight move down in April, continued to come down. Let's uh, look a little bit. So the stock fell as much as 8.5% before pairing some of its losses to trade 1.5% lower. And again, that's, you know, <laughs> the market can sense that, right? I mean, that was a buying opportunity. Uh, bets that ARM will benefit from a surge in AI computing have doubled the chipmaker's share price since its initial public offering in September. It's a market value of roughly $100 billion at this level. Uh, this typical case of ARM not being able to live up to the heightened expectations, that's what one of the analysts says. Again, I... Again, I think it's slow, but this, this does come out, right? Eventually, this shakes out positively. Uh, let's see here. AI demand will take some time to grow into the revenue mix to absorb that weakness. This is from the smartphones market, which is what these ARM kind of chips are, are for. I know the company's ARM holdings, but an ARM chip is used in computer, or excuse me, in, uh, in smartphones. The UK chip designer said it was expecting full year revenue to be between 3.8 billion and 4.1 billion, the midpoint for which is slightly below the consensus estimate of 3.9. Its revenue in March quarter and the forecast for its current quarter, however, came in above expectations. Arm shares trade at 64.68 times its 12 month forward earnings, significantly higher than the industry median. And that's kind of that, right? And again, definitely, I think you're going to get. It, to see these like massive run-ups in these companies, it makes sense, right? I, I remember even it was a few months ago when Sam Altman wanted what like he wanted like seventeen no sorry seven trillion dollars to build out these massive factories and, and data centers, which is you know roughly fourteen times what the current chip market is globally. And people scoffed at that, but the idea is that like this, th the amount of money this kind of stuff can generate going forward, and I'm talking like, the development from AI, you need these chips for AI, you need four phones, whatever, is it, it's gonna pay for itself. Now, this is a long-term thing, right? And maybe you don't rush in as much as the market has because they're trying to find some place to put their money at a time where, you know, the stance of the economy is a little bit uncertain. And I'm talking a few months ago to a year ago, uh, but still, regardless, I, I don't think this is a bubble in the sense that it's going to go away if we have some correction. Uh, folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archive live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. 
This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Let's take a look at what we got going on right now. So I was waiting on a call. We didn't get it. I was like, what the heck? All right. Uh, yes. Natural gas futures jump on bullish storage report. That is one weird kind of little market, right? I'd always spoken about that before, but they just burn the stuff off and somehow it still jumps up. And then if you live in St. Petersburg, Florida, Duke Energy gets to charge you more money because of the volatility of prices of natural gas. This stuff is crazy. Let's take a look real quick at Oracle. Duke Energy, by the way. Uh, did pretty well <laughs> for themselves last quarter because they're raising premiums. And that was one of the arguments they actually made. I think it was like, ooh, I was when I was living in my current apartment. So maybe, I don't know, it couldn't be more than eight months ago or anything. But they had released something, and they said, uh, because of the volatility of natural gas prices, we have to increase the cost of your energy bill. And I'm thinking, like, what are they talking about, man? I mean, we're like at rock bottom. And it was sometime like in like 2022, when it, if you guys remember when it spiked up, uh, pretty significantly, um, it was like, that was what they were referring to, and it came back down. Anyways, like I said, if you're in that area, or, you know, I guess anywhere, everyone has energy companies, I would buy your local energy company. It kind of sticks it to them a little bit. Take a look at Oracle right now. Uh, down slightly, again, kind of looking to retest that kind of gap level. I mean, it did, and it bounced off it. Um, not a lot of volume. So we're coming back down to retest it. Uh, at least that's on the technical, on the fundamentals. Oracle's 28 billion Cerner Health Tech bet uh, loses out. Lost customers, slipping sales. What more can we say? Um, take a little bit more about this. This can load. Oh, but you know what? We can wait for that to load because we have Tim Ord on the line. Now, guys, Every Tuesday and Thursday, Tim Ord comes on. This is Tim Ord of the Ord-Oracle.com. Strongly recommend checking out uh, the past archives that we have on our YouTube channel. Subscribe and give us a like while you're there. Uh, if you go over to TFNN.com, you can hit services. And right here, we have two of Tim Ord's uh, past webinars. These are fantastic. So one, the secret science of market tops. That's kind of figure out when it's going to top, what's going on with that, and the six secret ratios every trader should know. Strongly recommend it. Uh, we have Tim Ward on today. We got some interesting stuff to talk about, Tim. Tim, how are you doing? Good, good. Yeah, let's, uh, let's get right to it. So, Absolutely. Uh, look, you know, we talked about this lag breath thrust indicator. Yeah. And I was hoping, though, to kick in 
and it actually did reach its parameters. It went, um, went from uh, had, his lag press thrust indicator had to go from minus forty to a point or a yeah, point forty to point sixty in ten days to trigger that um, short term bullish uh, setup. Well, this one took twelve days. It's not as bullish, but it still leans bullish. It you know, did get to the parameters, but it took two more days than. Um, than ideally, I guess you might say. So it, it leans bullish. There's nothing bearish about it, but it's not as bullish if it reaches those parameters in 10 days. So I want to point that out. Um, first chart um, is the uh, top window is the NYSE McCollin, uh, McCollin Oscillator. And this is another low indicator. It's a little bit longer term. Uh, this one takes about a month to trigger if it's going to get triggered. And the uh, and when this happens, if you look at the chart, this chart goes back to 2017, mm-hmm. seven, or, uh, yeah, 2000-17, and the bottom window is the SPX. And the red line there is when the McCollin Oscillator hits below minus 300, that sets up the potential uh, bullish indicator. Then it has to rally to plus 300 within 30 days. And so that's the blue line there. And it shows you all the times that in, when you see the blue or the red and the blue, those were triggers. Uh, if you just see the red lines there, it gave uh, the setup. It never completed the uh, the buy signal, I guess you might say. We do have a setup right now. It triggered on August 6th or April 16th. This indicator did get below minus 300. Now, between now and May 16th, which we got another approximately about a week to go. And if it reaches plus 300, that opens the door. Probably we're in the midst of an intermittent term rally. So we look like the rally for, you know, at least several more months, if not even longer. So as of today, we're at plus 127.74. It doesn't count today what's going on because we've got an advanced climb right now of about, uh, about about two and a half uh, to one to the upside. So this uh, McCall and Oscar is going to rise today. It probably won't get to plus 300. We'll need a, a couple of strong days between now and next Wednesday to trigger this indicator. So for this to trigger, the market in general has to be going up here. And so far, uh, it's doing, it's kind of a lackluster here the last three, four days, the last three days. And uh, that may speed up because I think this indicator is going to get triggered. So if it does get triggered, what does that mean for the market? Well, we've probably got a, an all clear, uh, at least at a minimum, through July and possibly all the way to September. Uh, it's hard to say, but uh, it opened for the door for the short term that uh, this month will be up, next month will be up, probably July would be up at a minimum. Uh, so let's go to chart two. Absolutely. So the swag breath. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a swag thing. And actually, I already hit on it. It did reach parameters, but it didn't, which is the bottom window. Uh, we did get below 0.4, and we did get above 0.6, but it took us 12 days instead of 10 days. Still bullish, but not quite as bullish as you like to see. So, right. um, the, so anyhow, it didn't trigger, but it still leaned bullish. So let's, let's flip to chart three. Okay, give me one second. Let's see here. You know, I would also like to see at some point um, – you know, we, we're familiar with it, with it here at TFNN, but maybe like a webinar for the Zwag Breath or something like that. I mean, these would be cool, the McClellan oscillators. Regardless, we have chart three up. Um, curious to see what yeah, we have to talk yeah, about here. I could do that. Matter of fact, there's a, there's, there's, you really get the bullish. In, in the market, you have to, to get a bottom, you have to go through a selling climax. Uh-huh. If the market's going down and you're not producing a selling climax, the market's going to keep going down until it does reach a selling climax. Then once it reaches selling climax, it has to go right into a buying climax or a sign of strength. If it doesn't go into a sign of strength, you're going to see some more selling climaxes uh, until finally the market at some point finds a sign of strength. Okay. And that's how the market bottoms. That's the reason why this lag breath stress indicator, the McCollin oscillator uh, type indicators, and the summation type, type indicators signal when you have a selling climax that switches back into a buying climax and that bottoms and that puts the bottom in the market. So right that's on. the only way you can get a bottom in a market. So, um, but yeah, we could, 
but I'd love to do a, a seminar on that. And there's two, uh, three different, uh, those categories I'm talking about is the WAG breast threat, a threat indicator, McCollin oscillator, and the summation oscillator are different time frames. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, so you like to have all three time frames uh, kick in to really get a, a high probability uh, uh, bottom. So I, I see we're about up, up here. Yeah, so. awesome. No, I was just listening. That's that's good stuff. You know, we already have one in the market tops as well. But um, perfect. Well, Tim, stay, stay right there. We'll be right back. Folks, we'll be right back. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019 finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Tigers, you've seen his show, you've learned from his webinars, and now it's time to trade side by side with him. Join Larry Pesavento for the second month of his new service, Live Trading Fridays. Hosted in the Tiger's Den trading room on Discord, Larry has analyzed a number of commodities and indices, placed profitable trades, and explained his method. Whether you're new to trading or are a seasoned market veteran, trading side by side with a titan like Larry Pesavento will only enhance your game. Utilizing Fibonacci retracements and ABCD structures, Larry provides decades of insight into when to place trades, when to exit, when to ignore, and so much more. Learning is doing. So if you're serious about learning technical analysis and becoming profitable in this uncertain market, Live Trading Fridays is a must-have tool in your arsenal. Live Trading Fridays occur every second and fourth Friday of the month, so trading events for this month are May 10th and 24th. If you're serious about trading, we'll see you there. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tom O'Brien Show is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. We're with uh, Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle currently. Uh, Tim, we were actually on chart three right now. Let's look at some Bollinger Bands and everything else you got on here. Oh, yeah. All right, uh, chart three of it. Actually, when I look at the bottom window, 
this is the uh, uh, monthly SPX VIX ratio. And so what this is good for is picking out highs in the market. And uh, it always picks out large uh, declines. Some the smaller declines, sometimes yes, sometimes no, but most of the time it, it focuses, since it's on a monthly chart, it looks for the big declines that may be uh, coming forward. So, but anyhow, how this set up is when this, when the SPX is making higher highs and the SPX ratio makes lower highs, that's a negative divergence. Chances are you're probably going to go into uh, some sort of a high and it could be a significant high. Mm-hmm. Last time this thing was triggered was back in, it looks like a Jan or uh, December of 2021. Uh, the market was making higher highs. That ratio was making lower highs. Uh, going up into the April high, this really never triggered. Uh, the ratio made higher highs, and the uh, SP made higher highs. Even though you had a April pullback, it didn't suggest that you were going into an imminent term top. That's the reason I kind of just remained bullish. And um, we had another sign there, too. Uh, I got a or a March circle there. Yes. Uh, the reason why I circled it is when the uh, trading range, uh, let's see, uh, when half of the trading range is above the upper Bollinger Band. When, the, when that happens, you get a trigger, and, and that predicts the next month will be a down month, So, you, which we did. We announced it on the show that probably April will be a down month. It wasn't, but it shouldn't be any big decline because we did not see any SPX VIX ratio showing any divergence. And so he went down one month, now we're coming back. And I just want to point out today, today, you know, month is just beginning here. Mm-hmm. Where we're into over a week here. And the ratio currently, when I put this chart on, uh, is uh, 41.61. The, the last high, which would be April, was 43, uh, 43.86. In other words, we're, two, we're, only, we're less than two points from a high, even though the SPs have not hit a high, the SPX, the SPX ratio is almost, uh, it may hit a high here short term, and it's almost setting as high right now. That's usually a bullish sign if the ratio kind of leads the SPX. And so if this ratio hits the SPX, that's just at a minimum, we're going to hit new highs on the SPI, SPY or SPX here in this case. So uh, it looks promising, haven't quite done it, uh, yeah, but the month's still early, so chances are we're probably going to hit new highs here in May. Um, so, you know, that's, uh, you know, it's, it's a continuation type thing. So it looks good. Mm-hmm. There's nothing I see worrisome right now in the market. So if you're long, you stay long. Let's flip the chart or- four, if you would. All right, we got that up right now. All right, this is a short-term indicator. And the, as the uh, second window down from the top is the SPX tilt ratio. And it's on a daily chart. So you're combining the equity market with the bond market. And uh, this indicator is only geared for the short term. And what I really want to point out is when this ratio goes up too fast, and the RSI gets up around 70 and higher, normally you get a short-term pullback. And all those blue lines across the chart are times when this RSI for this ratio got above 70. So it only predicts short-term, you know, maybe three, four, five days at most for a pullback. Well, so far, this ratio, uh, when I made this chart, is uh, 56 on the RSI. So it's, even on a short-term basis here, I'm not seeing any signs that the market's going to run any trouble even for a three, four, five-day pullback. It's just not happening here. So, I mean... Maybe for the weeks out, this RSI may jump up there, but as of today, it has not. And um, so even on a short-term basis here, uh, uh, there's no even inkling of a of a, a short-term decline. So uh, even on a short-term basis, is is up. So not seeing any signs of what I'm trying to say. Uh, I thought at one point, I don't have it shown here, but there's a gap, I think, that formed on um uh, April 13th or somewhere in there, uh, which is around that uh, 415, 418 area. I thought we might run into that gap and stop, but uh, we're not even doing that. We're, we're actually exceeded that gap now. So how high is high, I don't know, but uh, we're going to go higher uh, short term and intermediate term. So let's, let's get down to the meat of the things here on, on yep. chart five. 
this is this is starting to be really interesting. What's going on here? This is this chart's actually starting to is actually kicking in right now as we're talking. And it's kind of been hinting at kicking in over the last month or two, but now it's actually doing it. Anyhow, the bottom window is the monthly XAU gold ratio going back to 1984. And I drew a trend line from the top of, of uh, 2000 or 1996 all the way down to the current time frame. To get above this trend line, I need to get above 0.6, 0. 0.6 or 0.06. And right now we're actually 0.061, but the month's not over yet. So this is a monthly chart. You have to wait for the monthly to close. If it closes up 0.6 or higher, then I'm saying we're breaking this trend line. And that's going to change the dramatics of the of the of the gold market because basically this this indicator, in other words, gold stocks in general have been weaker than gold going back to 1996. Now that may be reversing here. There were gold stocks maybe stronger. Uh, than gold going forward from here on for the next probably several years. Because if you look at the chart there at the bottom window, uh, that XAU gold ratio in general has pretty much been going sideways since 2014. It'd go up a little bit, down a little bit, but really not going anywhere. Well, the low volatility precedes high volatility. So the market's been really narrow trading range. And that volatility is probably going to pick up. That volatility, in my opinion, is going to pick up to the upside. And there's a lot of different indicators I can show you the reason why that's going to happen. Yeah. But uh, uh, the, the next um, surge, and and, and pr- probably this, uh, the gold market, in my opinion, is probably even going to find out out uh, perform the equity market. You know the. Uh, so I don't know it's going to be interesting uh, going forward what's what's going to happen here. And if you look at the uh, uh, not the top top charts RSI next window down, it's inflation deflation ratio. It's a totally different indicator, different parameters, different everything. And it's also up against that. I drew a dotted trend line there, and it looks like it's maybe crossing that trend line also. If you notice also that range has been extremely narrow since 2015. So I'll hold. Yeah, yeah. Hold on to the next uh, segment. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. 
TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. What is going on, folks? This is Jacob Shoup uh, filling in for Tom O'Brien. We are actually with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Uh, Tim, we got a few more charts left here. Uh, we're looking at gold before we went to break. Right. So, uh, so chart five. Yep. This is a monthly chart, so you got to look at the. But, you know, what's, what's the bigger picture? The bigger picture is, is right on the money as far as um, uh, leaning bullish in a longer-term scenario. So let's flip to chart six. Yep. Okay, this is another indicator. Uh, uh, the bottom window is the, uh, yeah, this is a monthly chart, too. This chart just actually measures the momentum of the up-down volume and measures the momentum of advanced decline for GDX. So it's all the technical, what happens inside GDX. So, uh, well, yeah, so the, the, the bottom window is the cumulative advanced decline for up-down volume. And I put a Bollinger Band on it. And when the Bollinger, when the, um, uh, this indicator closes above the uh, mid Bollinger Band, a uh, buy signal is triggered. When it closes below the mid Bollinger Band is a sell signal. And so right now, we got a sell signal back in January or late December of uh, 2021 and pretty much remained on a sell signal uh, until now. Now, over to the right is a blown up window of, the, of those indicators. So the bottom window, I, I guess you're right on the money. You're right on the Bollinger Band. Next one up is the advanced decline. Uh, cumulative on a monthly time frame, and you see there it's way above its mid Bollinger Band, so that's on a buy. And the next window up is the uh, monthly GDX GLD ratio. You always want gold stocks to outperform gold, and that's what happens in bull markets. So when this ratio is rising, it's a bullish sign for the gold and gold stocks, and it's, and it's been rising here for the last couple of months. And now we're right smack at the Bollinger Band. You know, but again, this is on a monthly chart, but this is what's supposed to happen compared to the chart we've seen on chart number five. So this is kind of confirming what's going on inside the gold market. So this is totally unrelated, different indicators here, and they're giving all the same sign. So if you look at uh, the top window there, which is GDX, and I think this is a head and shoulders bottom, and we're at the neckline right now, and I think... Uh, to get through a neckline, you need a sign of strength, that's, which is basically high volume and strong price move to get through that neckline. And it hasn't happened yet, but I'm thinking it's probably going to happen. So I don't see any top here. I think actually the market's going to see an acceleration. Um, so let's, let's flip to chart seven. All right, we are cooking. All right, chart seven is the let's see what's this the daily i think it's the daily uh yeah it's, it's a daily chart so anyhow the top chart on chart six was the monthly so i took it down looked at smaller time frames what's going on and this is the daily the bottom window is is not the cumulative but it was just up down volume with an 18 day average next higher window is the 18 day average of advanced decline so in general, when these two indicators are above minus 10, the market's in an uptrend. So it gave a buy signal back in 
looks like March 1st or something, mm-hmm. you know, first part of March, and remains on a buy signal, uh, even though the, the market over the last month really hadn't gone anywhere on GDX. It's kind of gone sideways. But if you do Elliott Wave, I'm thinking this is probably a wave four going on. What comes up next is wave five. Well, wave five, a lot of times, is the strongest part of the move of a five Elliott Wave up. Uh, but also it's an ending wave, too. So whatever ends a five wave up, you'll see some sort of a consolidation. And that's the reason why, if you go back to chart six, yep. if you can flip back and forth that Absolutely, path, yep. that's the reason. Why, that's the reason why I'm thinking you're going to see a sign of strength here. I think wave five of the Elliott wave is, is starting, I don't know, has, it's, it could be even starting today, I don't know, or it could start next week, don't know. Uh, but it's going to start here pretty quick. And you're going to see a science drink probably jump through that trend line, which is around 34, the neckline. Uh, then you get a chart. Then you get a, an ABC down, probably back down to 34. Then a more rally uh, throughout, you know, in my opinion, for a while. And now, can we yeah. go back to chart five? Yeah. Or We're there enough. Far, chart five. See, wait, wait a minute. Not, not chart five. Yeah, it's chart six. I'm sorry. Yeah, we were just on chart okay, six. We were on chart. All yeah. right. Yep. So I want to point out this, too. These signals on the, the up-down volume advanced decline on the monthly time frame are long-term signals. Once they generate a signal on a monthly time frame, they're usually at least a year and a half. And they can be forward. The last signal generated on, on chart six now was back in January 2021. It's just starting now to flip bullish. So that's over three years ago. That was on a sell signal. So even though some gold stocks did go up and go down, most gold stocks didn't perform very well at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, according to this chart, you know, it's, it's, well, that's going to change. Instead of a few stocks kind of leading up and down, the majority of gold stocks is going to go up here. And the signal is going to last a while. So at least probably a year, most likely uh, maybe two, three years. So uh, this market's actually been turning since actually – last October. And I actually started getting bullish signs last August. I got some bullish signs. Market never really went up, but didn't go back down. It just kind of went up and sideways. Right. And now you're st- it's starting to see um, the market is starting to accelerate to the upside. And this acceleration is probably going to get stronger short term rather than weaker. So, uh, And it's going to say, or you're going to have consolidations throughout, but you're going to have periods that probably going to look like uh, um, you know, 2019, or 2016, or even go back to 2000, um, you know, seven and back, in, you know, when the gold stocks were the vogue back then. Uh, so I'm, I'm thinking the, the the choppiness of these gold stocks is ending, and uh, yeah. a true trending market uh, is starting. And so back in 2000, I, I remember I called the, the bottom of that gold market. And I remember my portfolio almost, I think, doubled almost in the first year. Yeah. These things just really just took off. And it was common to see stocks go 10 for 1. I remember, I don't know, Tom will remember it, but I had BGO at a quarter or 30 cents. I can't remember exactly what price, but it was below 50 cents. It went to $15. Yeah, no kidding. So so, So I'm thinking similar things are going to happen like that again, because when the gold market gets hot, it gets really hot. And when it gets cold, it gets really cold. Yes. So I'm thinking we're ending the cold season and now getting going into at least a warm season and it could turn hot uh, down the road here. So. And we have a we have a viewer actually on YouTube as well. She's asking if there's any scenario within this kind of analysis where you could see something like a stronger correction before we resume this kind of upward momentum uh, we've been seeing. No, no. I'm thinking if if you go if you look on this chart six again, we're yep. right at that neckline, and I'm thinking since we're staying on the neckline and the neckline is not showing rejection to it, yep. I think it's absorbing the buy orders, and so I think that wave five is is coming. Uh, then after that, I think we'll see a, a pullback, but going back down to where we are right now. So I'm thinking we're going to rally to forty. Maybe 45, we get lucky, then probably a pull back down to the neckline. Sure. Tim, thank you so much for joining us. Great as always. All right. Thank you. We'll be right back. 
The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN educating investors don't forget you can listen to tfnn live on your mobile device 24 hours per day go to tfnn.com and hit watch tiger tv that's tfnn.com and hit watch tiger tv Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. I will be with you again tomorrow. We were just with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Again, that is ord-oracle.com. Strongly recommend it, checking out uh, his website as well as the archive that will be uploaded on our YouTube channel uh, shortly after the uh, market close. Now, one more thing I want to talk about, too, just while I'm on here. Is if you go to TFNN.com, we're at the front page. Again, this is Live Trading Fridays with Larry Pesavento. You guys know Larry. You love Larry. He's on at 1 p.m. Eastern time. So what he started doing last month is uh, twice a month, he's having a live trading event, right? So it's from 9 a.m. to noon Eastern time. Uh, come in there. It's in the Discord. And you, you basically trade side by side uh, with Larry. It is uh, it's pretty awesome, you know? If you've been with Larry for a long time, you already know how he operates. If you're new, strongly recommend doing this because you're going to get a lot of good insights. You know, we're looking at commodities a lot of times with this. Um, with this subscription, this is the monthly cost, okay? We, I was thinking about it too, and last month we had Larry Live, which is a code you put in uh, at checkout right around here. It was $50 off. It was only good for that month, but I decided, hey, you know, we should, we should do it for a little bit longer. So we decided to do that for this month again so you put in larry live right there you get 50 dollars off that's for as long as you subscribe and with this monthly subscription it's not one trading seminar it is two so you get two that is the second and fourth friday of the month 
Strongly recommend checking it out. The next one is tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Eastern time. If you have any questions, you just go ahead and email me at jacob at tfnn.com and I will help you out with it. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys there because we have a good time uh, every time. And uh, yeah, it's a great time. Looking at what we're at right now, the market's about 0.44%. Russell Futures up about 0.91%. NQs are flat and the Dow futures are up 0.84%. Silver is still going strong right now. 3.37% for the day as it stands out. Folks, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I will be with you again tomorrow for Tom O'Brien's show. Always looking forward to that. Again, sign up for live trading Fridays. That is 9 a.m. Eastern time tomorrow. We will see you there. Take care.